Thank you, Jody. Uh, welcome to Jody, our guest musician this morning. She'll be playing along with the, the band. So wonderful to have you here this morning. Yes. Very good. And good morning to all of you. I am Pastor Rick, and on behalf of the pastors and staff here at Word of Peace, welcome to worship. A special welcome to those new to Word of Peace. If you're new here, we'd love to connect with you. We have a gift bag for you at the welcome desk, and there are connection cards at the doors at the back, or you can go online to wordofpeace.org and fill out a connection card there. And welcome to all online as well joining us today. Today we continue our road trip series and the Bible reading we hear this morning is the conversion of Saul. And we'll explore more about what that means for our life and journey of faith. Also we'll celebrate Holy Communion this morning and all are welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion. Well, I give my thanks to you all for your prayers and support in this time. As you may know, the Scar family is going through quite a bit right now. Uh, we have the memorial service for my brother Randy tomorrow, and uh, Pastor Kristen this morning is with her dad in hospice care. So our thoughts and prayers are uh, for Pastor Kristen and being with our family and all as her dad is in hospice care. And then, and then also on top of it all, I had, a, uh, I had COVID, um, which I'm over now. I'm over that 10-day period and everything. I'm still going to mask up today when I'm out with you and all, just uh, out of precaution and keep my distance a little bit, but, um, but otherwise feeling well. So with all this going on, though, I really do thank you for your prayers and your support and your thoughts and well wishes. It, it means a lot to myself and to our family, so thank you for that. Uh, lots going on in the life and ministry of Word of Peace. We are hiring positions. We are hiring for our director of preschool, as well as a confirmation and youth coordinator position and children's ministry position and outreach coordinator. So, uh, please keep in prayers our interviewing process and all of that that is going on right now. We uh, have a couple of opportunities to reach out and serve our community. One is with Sharing and Caring Hands Lunch. That'll be on August 2nd. And if you can help with providing supplies for that or serving down in downtown Minneapolis, you can go to the website to sign up there. Also coming up, we'll be serving tacos, having Taco Tuesday on August 9th, and uh, that's where we'll be preparing and serving tacos for those at the Dayton Mobile Home Park, and you're welcome to be a part of that or to help prepare food for that as well. And then going back to kind of our job positions, we are celebrating a retirement next Sunday. Julie Piccinato, our director of Kids of Peace Preschool, is retiring She's served as our director since 2005, so it'll be a chance for us to uh, thank her and send her off with our blessings. That will be at the 945 service next week, and we'll have a uh, reception after the service for her as well. If you'd like to give a gift towards Julie's retirement, you can do that on, on our website too. So for more information about all that's going on, please see our website at wordofpeace.org. Well, now I invite you to take a moment or two to stand and greet one another, welcome each other with a hello or a wave or a handshake if you'd like, whatever you're comfortable with. Hi, Carol. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship from us. We're excited to sing with you, so please join us in, uh, in song and clapping, dancing, whatever the Spirit leads you to as we sing our opening song together.
We come before God now, not as we should be, but as we are, bringing our sins before God and hearing God's gracious word of forgiveness. We join together in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We join together in confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I invite you to join me in the prayer of the day as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear God's word. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and kids, I invite you to come on up for the children's message. You can join me up on the front steps. <laughs> well, good morning. Hi. Come on up. Hi there. All right. Well, look at this model I brought up with me today, a stick. And what do you see on the branch here? Butterflies. Yeah. Several butterflies here. And do you know what happens to butterflies? How do these creatures become butterflies? Do you know? Do you remember? Caterpillar? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They eat, caterpillars eat a lot of food, and then they make a cocoon and go inside for a while, and then they come out, and they come out a butterfly. It's really amazing that they change like that, right, from a little worm-like caterpillar into this beautiful butterfly that has colorful wings and everything. It's an amazing, amazing change. And really, the, the butterfly for us as Christians is a symbol for us of new life, right? That just like the caterpillar goes in the cocoon and comes out a butter, beautiful butterfly, Jesus went into the tomb and he was raised from the dead, and that will happen with us too, right? That we one day will die, but then one day we will live a new life in Jesus. But that new life isn't just about life after death. That new life is about now, too, it's about each and every day. In fact, in our Bible story in just a moment, we're going to hear about a man named Saul. And Saul didn't like Christians too much. He just didn't really understand Christians. He didn't know Jesus. And uh, so he, di he didn't like Christians. But one day he was walking along, and all of a sudden Jesus appeared to him. And it became a whole new life for Saul that he changed his life, and all of a sudden he started following Jesus and became a leader in the Christian church. In fact, it affected him so much he changed his name. He changed his name from Saul to Paul. And we know Paul as the great leader of the Christian church. He wrote a lot of letters in the New Testament, in the Bible. And 
So that really affected him. So we see how new life and change not only happens, like I said, when we die, but it happens each and every day to us because of Jesus. And so those times when we're maybe afraid or we're angry or maybe we're feeling kind of crabby, we know that the love of Jesus can change us too and can help us to love ourselves and to love other people as well and help other people. And that's a change too that can happen every day. So we can keep that image of the butterfly in mind about the new life we have in Jesus as we hear about the new life that Saul has in our Bible story today. Well, let's say a prayer. I'll have you repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus and the new life that he brings to us each and every day and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great. Well, thank you for coming up here this morning, and you can return to your seats. So good to see you. Please stand for the reading. A reading from Acts chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The word of the Lord. Greetings to you all once again, and once again, greetings to all of you watching this on video this morning. Well, sometimes we think of the journey of faith as being dramatic. I mean, take the famous actor Mickey Rooney, for example. Mickey Rooney was once interviewed on television. He was on his ninth marriage. His first two wives died, one with cancer and the other as a victim of a homicide. Then followed five unhappy marriages in succession for Mr. Rooney. At the time of this interview, he had been married to his current wife for 20 years. What changed, the interviewer asked. What changed, responded Rooney. I gave my life to Christ. That changed everything. I had lived my life in chaos. I was a millionaire when I was a child. I participated in every form of lust and human degradation. Then, 20 years ago, I gave my life to Christ, warts, bruises, and all, and that has made all the difference. Saul had a dramatic conversion, too. We first meet Saul in Acts chapter 7, where Saul is a young man, and those who are persecuting Christians, those who are stoning a leader of the Christian church named Stephen, are laying their coats at the feet of Saul. 
Very quickly, this moves Saul from being a willing bystander to being an active persecutor of the Christian church. In Acts chapter 8, we read, But Saul was ravaging the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Saul is a busy, resourceful, dangerous enemy number one for the church. By the time we meet him again here in chapter 9, Saul has gotten himself appointed as head of the Stop the Church movement. He has letters from church, from his officials, his authorities that say he is in charge of leading the persecution of Christians, and now he's on his way to Damascus to stamp out this Christian thing once and for all. But as he's traveling along the road to Damascus, all of a sudden there's a bright light that shines all around him. He falls to the ground and he hears Jesus speaking to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He doesn't know the one who calls him. But the voice intrudes into his self-confident journey. In an instant, the once vibrant, intelligent, believing and resourceful man is rendered helpless. He opens his eyes, but he cannot see. He has to be led around by the hands of strangers, and for the next three days, he will eat or drink nothing. The only way that he can have his sight restored is to visit a leader of the Christian church named Ananias, to learn from him and to be baptized by him. This change is so dramatic for Saul that after this he is no longer called Saul, but he gets a new name, a new identity, and from here on out he's known as Paul the great missionary of the Christian church and the one who writes several letters that we have in our New Testament of the Bible. Often, when we think of our own journey of faith, we might be tempted to think, well, it, it needs to be as dramatic as Saul's or it needs to be dramatic as Mickey Rooney's. But I'll never forget one church conference I went to where the speaker said, you know, there are two kinds of Christians. There are the microwave Christians and there are the crockpot Christians. The microwave Christians heat up quickly and all of a sudden come to faith because of some big event or some thought or some faith awakening in their lives. The crockpot Christians heat up slowly, over time. Maybe being born into a moderately active church family, taken to church as an infant, involved in the church somewhat over time, a, a gradual awareness of God's love and favor in their lives. One kind of Christian is not better than the other kind. There are both kinds of Christians in God's family. And in the end, no matter how we become Christian, and what's gotten us here today or to watch online, is not our doing, it is a gift of God. This was true even for Saul. His conversion was not his doing, it is a gift. When the Lord first appeared to him on the road to Damascus, Saul is knocked down and he doesn't even recognize the Lord. He doesn't even know him. He, he's, he says, who are you? And when it came to his baptism, Saul doesn't do anything to be baptized. His sight is restored and he's baptized. It isn't until after his baptism when he begins his learning about the Christian life and faith from the disciples that he's with for several days. 
And so really we see here that the journey of faith is more like being in a crock pot. It takes time. It took time for Saul to become more helpless and frail, and then he needed to be opened up and to learn and grow in the Christian faith. And isn't that what Jesus told us? That the Christian faith and, and our journey of the Christian faith would be like becoming a little child? Oftentimes we get the impression that the Christian faith is all about to become better. We think about it in terms of a ladder, right? We need to climb up to the ladder to God. We need to become a better Christian. We need to become a better person and become better and better and climb up the ladder to God. But really, as Jesus teaches us and as Saul shows us, the Christian journey is not one about climbing up the ladder to God and becoming better and better, but the Christian journey is all about God coming down the ladder to you and to me. That as we go along in our Christian journey, we realize more and more our sinfulness, our helplessness, and our need for God. And God comes down the ladder to you and me. It's kind of like the avid golfer named John, who knew all about his weaknesses. One day coming in from the golf course, his wife Mary asked him with whom he had played golf with that day. He said, oh, no one in particular. And so Mary asked him, well, didn't you play with, why, why don't you play with Bill anymore? And John responded, well, would you like to play golf with someone who throws his clubs and swears all the time and lies about his scores and moves his ball and won't stop talking when you're trying to play a shot? Of course not, said Mary. John said, well, neither does Bill. Our journey of faith is realizing more and more our own weaknesses and sins and helplessness and realizing that God climbs down the ladder to us. It's God's doing, not our doing. Modern American Christianity puts far too much stress on what I am to do or what I am to think or what I am to believe. We hear that we should say statements like, since I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior or since I took Jesus into my heart. But notice in today's reading that Saul did not decide for Jesus, but Jesus on the road to Damascus decided for Saul. And notice that Saul did not take Jesus into his heart, but Jesus took Saul on a journey as he became Paul. This is the amazing love and favor of God. I don't know about you, but I don't always feel and think and act and believe like a Christian. But thank God, our relationship to God is something that primarily that, that you and I don't do, but it's something that God does for us and has done for us. William Wilson was a drunk, an alcoholic, and an atheist. The year was 1934, and America was in the midst of the Great Depression. The place was a deep detoxification facility in a hospital in New York, wherein, as in past times, Bill, as he was called, had been brought in for a period of drying out. The, uh, the event that happened was a miracle that Bill was not ready for. Bill was desperate in his desire to stop drinking, but helpless against the craving and the weight of his depression that lay heavily upon him. In a moment of what may have been terror or prayer or a combination of both, he shouted out, If there is a God, let him show himself to me now. I'm ready to do anything, anything. 
The cry was barely out of his lips when the light struck. The room, he said later, was suddenly filled with a luminous presence which enveloped and penetrated his entire being. He felt free, and as the light faded away, he was left with the certain feeling of an abiding presence and an inner peace. But Bill's atheism was so strong that, that for a time he struggled to dismiss that event as an hallucination. But his wise physician assured him that a profound spiritual event had taken place. Bill's drinking did continue to plague him, but this event strengthened him, which enabled him to return to his investment business. And even more, he felt called to share his renewal with other alcoholics. While on a business trip to Akron, Ohio, he met an alcoholic physician named Dr. Bob Smith. The two discovered that as they helped one another, they were better able to deal with their own drinking problems. This two-person fellowship of Bill Wilson and Bob Smith began to enlarge and include other drinkers who desired to achieve sobriety. Out of this developed the organization Alcoholics Anonymous. And today, millions of alcoholics in 180 different countries have been helped through chapters numbering more than 123,000. Bill Wilson's journey seems dramatic, but it took time. And it took the realization of his sin and helplessness and the realization of God's great love and favor. And it took sharing his journey with many others. God works in and through the journeys of people like Saul and Mickey and Bill. And God does the same with you and me. Your being here today and your watching this online is a living, breathing testament to the fact that God really does work wonders in this world. After all, God got you in your own journey of faith. That faith is no less dramatic than Saul's. Whether you've heated up quickly or whether you have heated up slowly and are just now simmering in your Christian faith, when one thinks of all the reasons you might have for not being here today or not watching this, it makes your journey of faith nothing short of miraculous. God's got you. God's got you for God's great revolution. And I guess that really is dramatic. May we pray. God, we thank you that you come to us. You come all the way to us to meet us in the midst of our helplessness and sin. And so, Lord, may we each and every day continue to realize more and more your incredible love and favor. Indeed, Lord, your love changes us by giving us a new life forever but each and every day. We thank you for this great gift and this great realization. And indeed, may we walk with you on that road each and every day in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to stand and join us in singing.
Please be seated. I invite you to join me in prayer. Confident in God's care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Almighty God, we pray for your whole church throughout the world. Give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we be changed like caterpillars into new creations with your love. Help us to follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we are often caught off guard when you show up. Help us pay attention for your presence, that we may listen, humble ourselves, and repent for the ways in which we harm you, ourselves, or others. Open our eyes to your transforming love, that we may love your creation and your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation and its mission and vision to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Send your wisdom and guidance as we hire new staff to serve our congregation. Strengthen our leaders, guide our staff, and hold them all in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, we pray for those in need. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are sick, living with cancer, or are ignored or disregarded by our communities. We pray especially this week for Sue, Bill, Rosie, Richard, Michelle, Bob, Emmy, Fred, Joyce, Megan, Dan, Tom, Corey, Jason, Sharon, and Deb and all those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we give thanks for your eternal life and love. You put death to death, and your love welcomes us home. We ask that you walk with Jennifer Armigan and family mourning the death of her husband and father, Colin Armigan and for Deborah Scar and family mourning the death of Randy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, Lord, you have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for those who are searching for meaning, for those who are hurting, for those who gather each week, for those who gather online, for all your children and youth. Supply us with generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now offer to God and to the Lord's work a portion of that which God has first given to us. Thank you. 
I invite you to please stand. And let us join together in the offering prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, <coughs> to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now receive our Lord Jesus Christ in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Thank you. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The instructions for receiving communion are printed in your bulletin. Again, all are welcome.
I invite you to please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And as you go here, from here today, as you journey on the road, know indeed that God is with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, everyone, since Dane is at Scout Camp, we don't have the banjo today, but we still invite you to sing with enthusiasm and clap if you can keep up. Thanks be to God. Whoa.